sir. Hey, Pursue and Charlie. Indeed. <laughs> indeed. I like that word, indeed. You know, uh, that's a good word. I mean, you know, at one time I was at, uh, I went to Abyssinian Baptist Church. I was there for some reason. Out there, and the, the secretary, I had to make an appointment something like that. And the secretary up there is an old lady, you know, back in the day. And, mm -hmm. I, and I said something, she was, and she kept on saying, after, after puncture, she would say, indeed. But the, <laughs> the way she said it, it just, I just said, wow, that's a really good term when somebody's saying you said, indeed. The way she said it, that's classy. I'm going, hey, it's classic kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, listen now, as you, as you know, I'm calling you because I'm doing this series on on Ju um, uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. Um, different people I'm talking to, you know. Uh, I just finished uh, talking to Mike Sargent. We got more political than I wanted to, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I, wa I want to do with you more political. I want to do um, uh, well, my my niece's man because I just took them to see it. So that from a millennium perspective, and I'm trying to get in touch with uh, with a musician to talk about some other stuff. So anyway. Uh, yeah, you should call. Uh, you should try to get Craig Harris. But that's Craig that's Harris. that's that's exactly who I'm going to talk to. I I knew Craig was doing this movie about a year ago because we talked about it. He says, "Oh, I'm doing. I'm, I'm scoring this movie for it, blah blah blah." And I said, "Oh." Uh -huh. And then the fact I just saw him, uh, I passed by New York, and he said, "Yeah, he's doing the finishing touches. The movie's coming out." Blah blah blah. About a month ago. Anyway, yes, that's exactly who I'm going to try to trying to contact um, because not not necessarily for some other things. Well, from from that, but uh, some other, because you know. You know how Hollywood works because Mark he's uh, Mark Isham and him are credited with the music, but but um, uh, but that's how they work in Hollywood. Everything's about relationships. So so when Mark is his way into that that world, and so hopefully he'll yeah. be able to do some other stuff. Anyway, I want to talk to you more because in fact you did a, you did a program uh, a couple of weeks ago that I heard uh, with, with uh, this is I'm sorry. Let me go back. You know I jump around. The importance of this movie. To me, it's not. It is the film, of course, but it's the access, and and the people have to start talking about stuff. So you had an interview with two people, at least well, well, Sam and and this uh, this other brother from Laos County, uh, that you know talked about stuff that nobody talks about, and that's yeah. what that's the power of these kind of things. Because when a movie comes out, uh, uh, you know, Fred Hampton Jr. Is, is is talking, you know, so his point of view gets out there, other people's points of view gets out there, and it's very very helpful. Uh, tell me, uh, do you, I guess you saw the film. Uh, just give me your overall impression, then we can talk some really other some stuff. Well, uh, you know, for Hollywood, I thought that the film was uh, a, let us say, a noble attempt at going ahead and recounting some history. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, uh, you know, a few things really, uh, you know, uh, kind of jump out at me. You know, one thing is I think that the acting, of course, is excellent. That Daniel uh, uh, Kaluuya is really excellent as Fred Hampton. He captures that voice. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you listen to that. If, you, if you've if you heard any speeches of Fred Hampton, you know, you go ahead and you, you catch that. Also, of course, there's the issue in regards to O'Neill, the agent, and the kind of prominence of the agents, you know, in infiltrating organizations, you know, from that time and even before until now. Because, if, you know, we want to go and deal with agents, you know, we have to go all the way back at least to the Garvey movement, because the Garvey movement was the first movement that was actually infiltrated. And, uh, of course, the information that informants, because you couldn't be an FBI agent. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, it, it, there were no black FBI agents until the 1960s. Despite despite what Richard Pryor says when he does his thing, yeah, I work for the FBI. The Mexicans, I can talk Mexican. <laughs> what you say? Yeah, <laughs> you better speak. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, but, but yeah, now, we know. Now, um, one of the things that I think people need to understand is that when. Fred Hampton was murdered. He was 21 years old. You know, uh, Kaluuya has got to be in his 30s at least. So just in terms of understanding that this is almost a child. You know, this is when we talk about man, child, in the promised land. He's 21 years old. That O'Neill, when he was busted by the police, was still a teenager. 17. 
Yeah. So we're talking about people who are amazingly young, developing in so many different kinds of ways as, you know, people do. You know, now in terms of science, you know, people are talking about that your your brain does not fully form until you're probably about 25 years old. Exactly. So these are young people who are developing in so many different kinds of ways. The idea that Fred Hampton could be so actually frightening to J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI. But you see, and it's really not kind of put together. I guess there wasn't enough time to go ahead and look how he's bringing the Latino community, poor whites, and the gangs together to go ahead and fight for freedom and justice and equal rights. Now, that was the thing that was really frightening to the FBI because, you know, you can just imagine him going through stuff like that. It's like, you know, unbelievable. You know, here you've got a 21-year-old who's going ahead and talking to segments of the population in the Midwest and bringing them together in ways that had never been done before. <clears throat> You know, we go back in history, you got to go back into the 17th century and Bacon's Rebellion, mm. Mm. which was, you know, one of the times where poor whites, the indentured servants, and enslaved Africans got together to fight against the ruling class. And you can imagine back then, that free the ruling class out, as of course it did, you know, when we're starting to talk about, you know, Fred Hampton and the Black Panther Party. So, um, I'd like the movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I could not say I, I didn't like it. I would have liked to have seen more character development. You know, who is Fred Hampton? Where is Fred Hampton from? How is Fred Hampton's ideas being developed? Mm -hmm. You know, these are things that are, to, to me, missing mm -hmm. from this, you know, particular film. And of course, you know, there are time issues and development issues and, you know, numbers of other things as well. The other thing which is kind of missing, you know, it, it's kind of implied in regards to O'Neill actually drugging Fred Hampton so that when the police go ahead and attack he's not going to wake up and of course the other thing is is that the police had a sketch of the apartment they knew where Fred Hampton would be where he would be sleeping and they specifically went ahead and was shooting at the level of where his bed would be and the level that bed would actually be on. So as opposed to shooting, you know, uh, at someone who would be standing up or whatever. So, you know, you're shooting four feet in the air, you know, uh, or, or shooting, you know, what would be laterally. They're shooting down where Fred Hampton should be sleeping. Mm. Before you, before you go on, let me just I gotta address a couple of those things, and I, I'm, not, I'm not I'm talking as a as a person that 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 knows a bit about film, or at least uh, film criticism or been whatever, um, and that is uh, first the age thing. I got it. Was sure, nineteen years old. But here's a big problem. Remember, a lot of times films are made for relationships. You know what I mean? And so you know, mm -hmm. so you have to know who who you know. But the point really is is that I see that I hear that. But how many twenty-one-year-old, whatever, have actors could you get that have that range? They probably are out there. I'm, I'm not saying they're, I, they're not it, out there. It, I'm not, I'm not it's hold, an issue. I mean, it, it's an issue yeah. for sure. No, but what but I, I, I hold on. Let me just explain this. I right. think I think what they did was kind of interesting. But all of them, all the people that played those parts, they all are like basically ten years older. So basically, you just mm -hmm. moved the thing up ten years. Ten or more. Yeah. 
yeah, well, uh, yeah, ten ten or more years older that that's playing the characters, which sort of like keeps it thing. It would be awkward if you had a seventeen year old and a thirty one year old. So I guess they have to make a thing. Do we make do we make a, a, a newsies? <laughs> I mean, or do we make this other thing? I, you understand what I'm yeah, saying with yeah, that? Yeah, the other yeah, thing, and, and and you know, I'm in agreement. And you know, as I said, the actors did well in regards to their parts. But what I'm saying is, in regards to the projection of this, sure. you know, that as people have to understand historically, that Fred Hampton was 21 years old. Yeah, and at the end, you know? you know, with the credits at the end, yeah, they say they they did they too say he was 21 and Mark Clark was 22. Yeah. Uh, but, they say? Yeah, but yeah. but here's the other but, thing. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying. But you know that reality. You know, it's it's a difficult reality, especially now in 2021, where you know we've got you know 30 years old, 30 year olds, you know, moving back in with their parents, and you know all all these things in regards to people understanding that it is you know really really difficult to kind of go ahead and set out at your own at the ages where we were able to go ahead and mm-hmm. kind of set out on our own. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, it, it's, it's difficult. It's, it's a lot different now. Yeah. You know, as you know, you know, when we were 17 and 18, we could go ahead and begin to set out on our own as independent <laughs> human beings, mm-hmm. individuals that were not necessarily tethered tightly to our parents Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we didn't have to depend on them or whatever else it is but now it's a different kind of reality and we see that in regards to the fact that it it, it appears to be taking you know young people uh a little more time to go ahead and uh, you know, find their way in the world, let us say. Yeah. Well, because one, the world has changed. So one, more, one more thing you have to bring up, uh, I have to make this up because I really have to talk about, say this, um, because it suffers, not suffers, but it's the same problem that that, uh, that a lot of people have with Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. They think mm-hmm. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom is about Ma Rainey when it really is about the uh, the, the band, the the the, uh, the Black Bottom, meaning the, uh, the, uh, the 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 band is an ensemble cast. It's about the band or whatever have you. So so the point of view it wasn't it wasn't supposed to be Ma Rainey's story as much as about that story that particular incident. You know how the the Southern uh, reality and then then recording reality is two different things and then the whole that that whole thing. But with with, with this whole uh, Judas and the Black Messiah, it's it's kind of, I thought it was very smart because what happens is in two hours, whose story are you going to tell? So basically, this is the story of the Judas, the coward. This is the story. Mm-hmm. So what, what that avoids us trying to go and, and, and find out about you know, uh, 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 Fred Hampton uh, being part of the NAACP when he was 14 and blah, blah, blah. Well, that's sort of, when when, uh, when Mark Clark says something about he's, he was at NAACP, that's sort of, it's, it's implied in there that, that people got their start. So basically, if we enter with trying to do Fred Hampton's story, we do have to have all this stuff. So so hopefully it's open for a whole miniseries. But if you just confine it to the Judas thing, it's really interesting because it's his story. You see? that they're Just like Black Marine's Black Bottom, really is Chad, 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 uh, the Chadwick Boseman uh, 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 character's story. You see? So it's kind of really interesting to me that people want, hey, but I want to know more about Fred Hampton. Well, go ahead. You look online and whatever happened. The film yeah. is about you. Yeah. See? Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's my only point. thing I you try know, to explain. It's definitely an entry point. Yeah. You know, one of the things in terms of Ma Rainey, you know, which I don't know if people really go ahead and get is that at the end where they have the, the Paul White Man band or whatever mm. going ahead and yeah. playing the song that, uh, you know, the Chadwick Boseman character wrote. You know, it's the exploitation of black labor, you know, black culture, mm. you know, black music. And obviously there, I mean, because that's what it is. Yeah, Ma Rainey's being treated a little differently than just any old body. But in terms of the money that she's going to make for this, mm-hmm. uh, you know, these, these uh, you know, white entrepreneurs, you know, people who are doing the courting, you know, the people who own the record label is obviously so much more than mm-hmm. what, you know, Ma Rainey is receiving in regards to, uh, you know, the little pittance that she gets for all the money that she makes yeah. or ultimately what is the white establishment. Well, and then at the last, when... Um, you know, Chad Bozeman is, is there to, to, you know, say, well, I've got these songs that I could record. And he's like, well, no, you know, listen, I'll just pay you for these songs. Mm-hmm. And then 
you see the Paul Whiteman, all white band going ahead and recording these songs and making hits of them, you know, it goes and looks to the clear exploitation, you know, of, uh, you know, black artists that goes on until today. If we can get back to, you know, to, to Jews and Black Messiah, again, I don't yeah, want to really too, too, too much on the, on the film, but there's a thing that I, when I, I viewed it twice, the second time last night, I came up with this word. I, I, the word I'm stuck with is cowardice, okay? It's cowardice. And I'm thinking, and you should know this, but now you're, and even in your move, any kind of movement, I mean, how many real warriors, you know, do you really have? I would say up uh, well, more than 65% of people any and they really are cowards because risk reward, they weigh risk reward, say, ah, just like in the film where when, when you had the guy that worked in the hospital, he said, Hey, you're not gonna jeopardize my job. In fact, he goes and calls the cops on the guy, you know? Mm -hmm. So so that that kind of thing. So in other words, there's more cowards than they are uh, um, um I wanna say re um, um, revolutionaries in any situation, yeah. you know. But more, I would go that even further. Uh, let me look at, um, here's the other thing, uh, same thing, J. Edgar Hoover to me is fascinating uh, um, because from all indications, he had black blood in him. You know, he had a little spook around the ears, as they say, you know? And the other indication, of course, is that he's homosexual male, you know? And so here it is, here's a self-hating homosexual male Black homosexual black male doing everything he can against black people and homosexuals. It's kind of interesting mm -hmm. to me. You know what I mean? And and, yeah. and, and, and now we can give uh, um, um, the uh, Bill O'Neill character a little leeway because he's seventeen. He, you know, said, "What do you know?" You know, and he, and he, he's just an op not an opportunist, but he's a calculating guy. You know, he's just calculating, and he's just he just does what he does. He, and 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 that's different. You know what I mean? Uh, I, it's a cowardice. You know what I mean? After a while, but it's 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 different. You know, he's you know he's, yeah. he's being played. I guess that's what I want to say. We we well, you know, one of the things, and this is this is something that that you know comes out of even my experience in the movement. You know, you have to really know who people are who are around you and who you're working close with, especially, you know, if you're, you know, doing things which, uh, you know, the law may look at uh, as being illegal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got to know people in terms of their lineage, you know, where you're from, who your parents, yeah, who your people, you know, where you go, where's your apartment, where you live, what are you doing, what's going on, all right? Then, you have to be in a particular situation, which you essentially comes from the street. You mm. know, when you're in a particular situation where people have to go ahead and throw down and do things, you know, are these people going to have the appropriate heart and do the appropriate things, you know, that are, uh, you know, that go along with being part of your particular group, your organization, mm. you know, and everybody, of course, doesn't meet that challenge. And, or on occasion, you know, you find people who, uh, you know, end up with these strange, you know, strange, strange things, you know, appearing out of nowhere. Uh, and then, you know, once again, going and becoming part of other organizations later on and using the entree that they got when they started wherever they started at to go ahead after they destroyed one organization to go into another organization and then destroy that. Exactly. But the other you know, so, you know, when O'Neill is an example, you know, he's, you know, he's got the gun and he says, OK, I'm going to cover the roof. And then all of a sudden he disappears. Mm -hmm. That's a sign. Yep. Be you know, I don't know if, if, you know, that's exactly how everything went down, because, of course, you know, Hollywood, you know, you got to go ahead and have some artistic license. Mm -hmm. But, you know. If things went down like that, I'm like, well, wait a second. Where were you? Were we getting shot at? And, yeah. You know, getting wounded and getting arrested and where the hell are you? Well, you there's a did, did, well, where did you go? Well, you're right. It's Hollywood. There's a lot of plot things. Like, like when they're with the, with, with the uh, with the gang and the guy says, "Hey, that's the guy that ripped us off." And and, yep. and, and, and you know, of course, some somewhere later in the con in the conversation, when the things gonna say, "Who was that guy?" Hey, hey, blah 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 blah. That comes out. But mm -hmm. that's but this is Hollywood. This is this. I mean, Hollywood. This is this. This the, the confines of, of a script or whatever it is. Um, I was going to bring up something else. Um, oh, uh, here's the thing. Uh, we got played. I, I, that's another term. Remember, I got cowardice in my head. And then I got this other thing. We got played. 
I mean, you know, you can you can you can say that uh, uh, Karanga got played. You know what I mean? You can say a uh, Farrakhan got played. You know what I mean? You can say we, you we all get played, and I think yeah. that's part of the thing. You know what I mean? And I think that that that, that could squash what? a lot of these. Things. Do you want to? Yeah. Once you're played. You have to accept responsibility for that, okay? Especially and when it's especially, especially when it's brought up to you. Down, all right. That's where people fall down. Initially, if you remember, you know, there's the uh, you know Farrakhan where he talked about uh, Brother Malcolm today. We you know we're talking on the twenty first, the anniversary of, of Brother Malcolm's execution. Uh, you know. The first time he comes out and talks, he's like, you know, it's none of your business mm -hmm. how a nation goes ahead and treats its traitors. Mm -hmm. You know, that was how he came on. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, you know, the heat got so strong that he had to come to the Apollo and kind of apologize, you know, apologize to my brother Malcolm's wife, Sister Betty, and all the rest of this and to the community or whatever, because, you know, he saw that. Look, he didn't have the kind of support in regards to going ahead and saying something like that that he should. Mm. All mm. right. In the case of uh, Karinga, you know, there's a thing. He's got to take more responsibility for what happened in terms of Bungie Carter and John Huggins, other kinds of situations where it was possible to go ahead and put organizations against each other. You know, that would, uh, you know, lead to deaths, you know, because, I mean, that's a serious piece. Mm -hmm. And then taking responsibility for his role in torturing those women, which he never takes responsibility for. Yeah. You know, he wanted to be, you know, he wanted to be, say, you know, saying that he was a political prisoner at the time that he was in prison. Huh. Well, but not according to the testimony of the women that were tortured by him and his organization. Well, well, obviously, obviously, the the so the the, the black nationalists or whoever we who are people are calling these days, uh, they they're not do they don't have a me too kind of section on this stuff. Look, there's one thing I want to say that 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 thing I have a sign and back me. Of course, you can't read it because you're a thing, but the sign says, you know, black people don't want to be wrong or wronged. I think uh -huh. that's the that's I mean I mean you know that's the whole thing. Black people don't want to be wrong. Or wronged, and therein I think lies the problem. You don't want to fess up to your mistakes, and we, you know, yeah. it's, it's, you know, especially when you say, "Oh, you got played," and they say, "No, no, no, no I'm too powerful. I'm too, I'm too slick. I'm too whatever to be played." Oh, no, 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 you got played, man. Yo, you know, you, remember that five dollars you had in your pocket? Look in your pocket. Look in your pocket now. It ain't there. In fact, I would even say this. I say, how much we get played? Barack Obama comes to town. He plays us. And we still, he's, that's that's what, just what I see. I like confidence, man, because confidence, man, can always come back to town and you welcome them in, you know? So so what happens with Barack Obama? He played us. And nobody's, nobody's saying, hey, you know, nobody wants to say, hey, we were wrong and we were wrong. They don't want to say that. They want to say, oh, no, 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 he's cool. He, nah, 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 nah. See, see, anyway, I'm going off as usual because I got this whole bug in my head about, 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 this, about this thing. Okay, the, uh, let's go. Uh, let, let's talk about the Black Party, uh, Black Panther Party for self defense, and that whole atmosphere around there. Because one of the things that people have to realize, because when we talk about this, we talk about the political shot. But remember, what was happening around that time? You know, not only did we have uh, politics happening, but at the same time, you know, you had basically sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You know. And so all that, all that, the atmosphere is kind of different. You know what I mean? It's kind of interesting, you know? And that, and I, and I don't know if people really ad address that stuff, you know? Uh, what, what's your, uh, what's your view of what I just said? What, what, is there a take on that? Well, you know, I mean, like when you, you, you think about what's going on, um, we, first of all, you know, we have to try to get more embedded in our own history and understand, you know, things that are going on and, and look at, at ways in which we can be manipulated. You know, this, I mean, one of the things I can point to is looking at the so-called Black Lives Matter movement. You know, when people talk about BLM now, they try to talk about Black Lives Matter. Hmm. You know, when we talk about BLM, we talk about the Black Liberation Movement. Okay. 
know, two totally, totally yes, different kinds of realities. You know, people go ahead and talk about the Black Panther Party. They talk about the Black Panther Party 10-point program. But they don't mention the fact that that is from the Nation of Islam. Muhammad speaks what we want, what we believe. Mm. That was grafted directly from the Nation of Islam. Yeah, there's some changes in language because there are mentions in terms of uh, uh, Marxism, socialism, I mean, you know, words that the nation would use. Mm. But when you look at, if you take them and put them next to each other, you know, Nation of Islam, what we want, what we believe, Black Panther, mm. 10 point program, you see where that particular 10 point program came directly from the Nation of Islam. Well, here's the thing. And you've got You've got scholars mm. who either don't know that or won't admit that. You know, uh, but, but see, let, let me say this. You, you just saying that, all of a sudden I'm going like, hey, I remember that. But until you just said it, I did not know. Because I the reason why I remember it because I somewhere, uh, uh, um, um, right before I went to the Air Force, I think in 69, somewhere I had a, a, a thing that had the, that a sheet with, with uh, in my, on my wall, a sheet of the, of the, uh, of the Islam, you know, the, the nation of Islam thing, mm-hmm. of a nation of, uh, you know, and also the, 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 the Black Panther thing side by side. So I actually had that. You know, the pay, I had the, the, the documents until you just said it. I for, totally forgot about that. Brother, you know, it is, you know, it, it's, you know, you see it all the time and you've got people who talk about, oh, you know, the Black Panther Party program, but it's so revolutionary and so new and the rest of this stuff. But when you look at it, when you understand it, as you said, you put it right next to the nation of Islam, what we want, what we believe. You see where the Black Panther Party program comes directly from that. But, you know, there is there is another, not a failing, but there's a thing. Here's the other thing. Uh, unless that's the whole thing about advice. You need advisors on stuff like that that are actually, you know, I know they, they know how they, they, the cooperation of the family. I wanted to say that, too. One of the things about the, the 60s, like they had the family. You know, uh, 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 Mother Kua and and also uh, Fred Hampton Jr. sat with the mm. filmmakers, and they said they had an eight hour session. Now, yeah. that reminds me of what we you talk about knowing people. That's what we used to do in the sixties. You know, we 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 would have a meeting that started at, at literally at, at six o'clock in, at, 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 in the evening or nine o'clock in the evening, and go to the next morning. We talking, yeah. you know, you be hashing things out, smoking cigarettes, hashing things out, hashing things out. It wasn't really allowed. Nobody was getting high, and no, it wasn't no liquor there. It was just like, just ha- that was our drug. Our drug was 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 the um, you know, was the movement, you know. Yeah. And so and so, what I'm trying to say is that w- nobody has, nobody does that anymore. We don't have extensive eight hour sessions that you really find, try to find out about somebody. I don't want to get personal here, but I used to have this thing I used to do. I'm sorry, I used to be a player. And, and, and you know, you, you, you understand this. And I used, to have, I, used to, I used to tell women, well, it's good we can go out on a date, but I'd rather have a, 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 a well, I say a weekend. Let's spend a weekend together. There you find out about things. You know, we don't have the time for this stuff anymore. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it's difficult now. And one of the reasons why it is as difficult as it is is because there are people with firsthand information who either are not being called upon to, to go ahead and be involved in projects like this, or, you know, in other instances, as we said, people don't know, or they're no longer here. Their ancestors now. So, you know, we have this responsibility, you know, while we're here to kind of tell the truth, kind of go ahead and make certain voices available to the public who otherwise might not be available. So as an example, when I did that program and I started talking about the origins of the Black Panther Party, Mm -hmm. I know that there was a Black Panther Party office in Harlem, in the summer of 1966, prior to the founding of the Oakland chapter. I know that because I visited that office. I was physically there. Okay? 
So, you know, when people talk about, well, the Black Panther pa- uh, Party, Black Panther Party was founded in Oakland, California by Huey Newton and Bobby Seale. That's not true. But also, and here's one of the things that I, I regret. Mm. Come to find out that Eddie Ellis, you know, our comrade from WBAI, oh. so involved in the prison rights movement, oh, yeah. uh, the right for criminal justice. I still remember that guy. He, yeah. was, he was part of the Harlem Black Panther Party. He was part of the Revolutionary Action Movement and may have actually had meetings with Bobby Seale mm-hmm. and Huey Newton. Mm. Now, of course, he's an ancestor now, and I really didn't get that information until after he was ill, and it may have even been, you know, he, he may have actually, you know, made his transition when I really found out about that. Wow. And people who interviewed him, wow. for the most part, they talked to him about prison reform, oh. uh, you know, those particular issues, not knowing that even the reason why he was in prison was related to that particular initial relationship wow. with the Black Panther Party and wow. Harlem Revolutionary Action Movement. Well, now you've just you've just said something that's kind of interesting because one of the, one of the things that I accomplished when I was at BAI and doing these large audio dramas is because people had to talk to each other. Yeah, I'm trying to say that thing about Eddie Ellis that would have been brought out. Yeah. If we were working on an audio drama together, that would have been brought out. One of the, one of the yeah. funniest things that ever happened, right? I was I forgot what audio drama we was doing. I really forgot. It may have been Pinocchio or maybe not, I don't know. Maybe it was uh, uh, I forgot what it was. But in the corner, as we we, we were you know getting stuff together, I had you know the Irish boys, you know Mick Dewan and those guys over there. They were they were in they were in conversation. <laughs> with uh, with Zenzile, right? And I clearly, I remember because in my head I go, uh oh, we got the radical Irish and we got we got this radical South African. They must be plotting revolution, international revolution over there in that corner. <laughs> I mean, there's this little inside joke, but but you understand? What I'm, I'm trying to say there are other atmosphere when these things could, could come out, but he, that should have been brought out. Ellis should have been, I mean, extensively interviewed. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, as I said, I know people who have interviewed him and their focus was on the black prisoner movement of the early nineteen, early to mid-1970s. Mm. You know, Attica and beyond, and prison organizing and, and those particular kinds of things. Mm. And that's what they would talk to Eddie about. They would also talk to him about, you know, criminal justice and reform and, uh, you know, looking at prison reform, because those were the issues that Eddie took on so strongly. All right. Uh, I'm going to call his partner. Um, you know, I, I, oh, my God. You know, his name will come to me. You know, the person himself is doctor. He got his doctorate or whatever. You know, mm-hmm. his name will come to me it's in, in, in my phone. But, um, you know, it, it, it's, you know, just, you know, one of those things. And, and so many people can neither confirm or deny, mm. you know, and that, of course, becomes an issue. But our history, I mean, our history is so rich. There's so much there. And this film, mm. you know, gives us an opportunity for people to go ahead and take uh, you know, an archaeological dig that, to go that, ahead you, and you, go and get into and try to understand what some of this actually really was. You know, I'm glad you. I'm glad. I'm glad you said exactly that because one of the reasons why I do what I do is because somewhere, you know, early 80s, whatever it is, I started to interview authors, and I come sort of weird bona fides in interviewing if I really get into my zone, but. I think that everybody should be interviewing their elders right now. Literally, right now. I, I, um, uh, anyway, there's this older woman in this, in, in where I am in this area in, in, um, in Chesapeake. Uh, she's 85 right, right now, you know, and she, it's amazing. 
I interview, I, I'm, I get, I'm doing a series of interviews with her just on a regular ground stuff, kind of really, really interesting. And I've done this when I was in South Africa, this guy, um, uh, this old guy in, 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 in Dimbaza, I would sit down and interview. I think I about four or five sessions with him. Amazing, given his perspective of history and a perspective of history that somebody who is truly the downtrodden versus somebody who's a, who's an academic versus somebody who's whatever, whatever, is woof. It's valuable. So I'm trying to encourage everybody to get some sort of weird YouTube channel, some kind of channel, and start interviewing the elves, interviewing people around you. I mean, it's important that you allow me to talk to you every once in a while because this becomes part of some sort of historical record, you know? Yeah. 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 And uh, I think some of us recognize that we've got a lot of work that we have to go ahead and do. You know, my uh, focus, uh, you know, at this point is going to become doing more of that particular kind of work. We formed an organization called UPAMA to the Ujima Pan-African Media Archives, yep. where we can go ahead and take some of the information that we have and put it in some kind of form where it will be accessible to generations uh, to come. Yeah. Because ultimately that's what it is. You know, we want to leave a legacy. We've got to go ahead and work at that because we can't expect other people to go ahead and mm -hmm. uh, tell us, you know, what should be left. <laughs> well, yeah, you, know? You, you know, I'm down, Not you know, happen that way. You, know I'm, you know, I'm down with that. Of course. Uh, and the way things are happening now, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get back to South Africa, but I'm going here also specifically because a, a group, a, a village group wants me to, to to deal, to deal, you know, to do some audio drama with them so they can, you know, because I use it to, to uh, uh, for community development, actually. And so I'll be there for three months and I'm, I have to head back here because I'm trying to do this play. My point is, look, you know, w w um, that somehow I think ev everything has to be done. Um, and, and you, you, we have the resources, you know, we, we, I say we have, we have the personnel that can get the resources. Let's put it that way. You know, I, I don't know how, yeah. to, how to, how to say it. And we just have to have, we just have to execute somehow. I don't, I, I don't understand why we can't get this thing done, you know, because we all, we, there's enough boomers or whatever have you that somebody's got some money someplace. There's some, somebody can write some sort of proposal someplace. I don't know, you know, so let's see what happens. Okay, so yeah. Basir, anything else on the film that you want to talk about in the film or the whole? I, I want to really talk to you about the era that, that that we should that you know about because oh, one of the things that that was left I would say left out, but you can find out when when these people do these interviews surrounding the thing. I really like that 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 we have this era where everybody's talking about it. Everybody has a different thing because they know the Black Panther Party for Self Defense is noted for of uh, the Breakfast Program. And then some people mm -hmm. might, might understand it's the clinic thing. But what people didn't know or don't know, they used to run buses up to the prison to visit to visit your loved ones in the prisons. You know, yeah. those yeah. they did a lot of little things. Uh, somebody was just uh, listening to some sort of uh, cast, and they would say, "Oh yeah, first thing they one of the things they did was they put a stop sign up on the on the, on the street where they were, people were getting hit, kids were getting hit by cars. So they were doing stuff uh, that basically government should do." that won't do, yeah, yeah. you know? And, well, and, yeah, we have to remember, you know, at, at the time when organizations like the Panthers, uh, organizations like the Young Lords Party organizations, uh, you know, in, well, I can talk about Brooklyn in terms of, uh, you know, the East organization in Brooklyn. I mean, one of the things that we were concerned about was the things that were taking place in the community. Mm -hmm. And very often, the services that government was providing in other communities that were not necessarily provided in our communities. Mm. So when the young lords went into, uh, I'm trying to remember what it was, East Harlem or South Bronx. East Harlem. And went ahead and took all the garbage. That was East Harlem. Uh, in terms of this, yeah, East yeah, Harlem. Yeah, it was, it was Second right. Avenue. I can uh, tell you, I know exactly right. where it was, Second Avenue. <laughs> right. And they took all the garbage, put it in the street, and, yeah. you know, set the garbage on fire. Mm. It was to address a particular situation that was existing in that community. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, sanitation department wasn't coming and doing what they were doing in mm -hmm. each community equally. Mm -hmm. And then, actually, I, I appreciate that. That was very strategic because they did it in that Christmas week, which was a down news week, which means that it got a whole lot more exposure <laughs> than it would regularly. It couldn't be uh, uh, swept under the rug, so to speak, you know. Yeah. Pun, here's pun here's one. You know, my wife talks about 
she grew up she grew up on uh she grew up in the bronx uh your boston road or whatever she was mm-hmm. you know in in this uh, apartment building mm-hmm. and downstairs in the apartment building was the black panther office mm-hmm. so that building had heat all the time because <laughs> the landlord made sure <laughs> that they had heat because the Black Panthers were like, listen, you know, we need heat. We're going to make sure that you provide heat in this particular building. Mm. Mm. Now, of course, they couldn't do it for all buildings or whatever. But again, you know, these are the kinds of things that, that people need to recognize because these are things that can organize people. Mm. You know, if you've got issues that you've had for years and nobody will respond and then you get an organization that says, well, listen, we can go ahead and solve this problem. And they solve that problem. You've been politicized Mm. Mm. because you see there's another way. But you also take that politicization with you. Can I say I want to I want to tell you something very personal. Uh, that you that that you may may appreciate because I just found out when I was just in St. Louis because I have a lot of my writings and stuff like that in St. Louis and I was going through some other stuff and I found a newspaper article and I totally forgot I knew about the thing but I didn't know exactly every anyway when I was in the Air Force which was which was unusual because um, basically in fact let me make this a whole story here um, I was trained uh, from. Uh, uh, 68, 69, uh, in a little revolutionary cell, right? Uh, there was three, three. I want to say girls and boys. So we were young, three girls, three boys, right? But our our facilitators, if you were, our whatever thing, our cell leaders was Bobby and Billy Shepard, right? So what do you mean? Well, Bobby Shepard is the one when you see the when you see a uh, Judas and thing. If you see that clip that they did, they said DP. Robert Shepard, that's that's one of the guys. So I was trained politically because they had been to Vietnam. They tra- I was trained politically. It was unbelievable. They said, well, nobody knew that I was going to the Air Force. I didn't know I was going to the Air Force, but I went into the Air Force. But here's the thing. When I was in the Air Force, what I did was I was, I was finally, I never left the country. It's Vietnam era. This is 1970. This, this basically this happened in 73, but I, 72, 73, we're doing this stuff. I I was a lab technician, so I had we had a lot of people in the lab. There's a little dispensary in, in McGuire Air Force Base, and I had what I did was I got the lab or the the Air Force resources that we went up to um to Brooklyn to actually Fall Rockaway, and we did lead poisoning and sickle cell tests as yeah. there as well as in Pembroke, uh, New Jersey, where, where we was down 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 where McGuire's down in uh, well, down New Jersey. Um, there, so we, we we did these community things with, with with sickle cell and lead poisoning. This is like 1973, 72. What I'm trying to say is that so when I even in, even in the Air Force, I had I had basically I had the military do something for the community instead of me going out killing some 13 year olds in the rife patties in Vietnam. I was in a position to to do for the community. You, you see, yeah. The reason why I say this, the reason I say this, is because I, when I realize it, that most people, if you're trained at a very early age. No matter where you go, you will turn that into you. You will you will do the revolutionary thing. I want to say revolution. You will do the evolutionary thing. You will do the thing that you was trained to do. That's what I'm trying to say to serve whatever it is. Um, I just thought I'd throw that out. Why I don't know because we talk about stuff like that. You know? <laughs> yeah, because of course you know we talk. You know we're gonna talk. You know it's gonna mm-hmm. you know, not just sit on one particular issue, but it will you know just blossom into a discussion about so many other different kinds of things. Okay, well I'm not going. Yeah, I'm not going. We do. I'm not going to keep you, but anything else on this film? The 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 uh, any you can see coming out of this film. Uh, what, any well, word on this, and, and in your circles? Of, what are people saying? People, uh, you know, a lot of young people, a lot of people, period, are going to look more closely at the Black Panther Party. Uh, maybe those particular years, uh, you know, the whole history of the party is so interesting. You know, the contradictions between the East Coast and the West Coast. You know, uh, the questions in regards to people kind of romanticizing, you know, some of the elements in terms of what the, the you know, the, the, the uh, Panther Party was. You know, I mean, one of the questions that, uh, you know, I get a lot is like, well, why, why didn't you join the Black Panther Party? Mm. And I have a whole bunch of reasons. Now, you know, one of the interesting things is when uh, the Black Panther Party had its 50th anniversary and, you know, there were programs in, in New York. I was always invited to be parts of panels regarding mm. that. And I would always have a disclaimer. Mm. 
Mm. And I would say, I am not now, nor have I ever been a <laughs> member of the Black Panther Party. Mm. But I had relationships with folks within the party. And mm -hmm. of course, you know, we were doing some things, you know, in a parallel fashion for, uh, you know, part of the time that I was, you know, active, you know, in the, the movement of the uh, 1970s, you know, late 1960s, you know, into the 1970s. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because, you know, I'm, I was in the same situation you were because I had other things to do. Actually, I was more involved in some other stuff. I was going to be, a, a, I would never join any political party anyway. But what I did help, one, I think somebody came to you one time, I did something for the newspaper, edited, I did something for the newspaper one time. But that's about it. I never really was into the, into the Panthers that way, you know, because um, we had our own. And, and, you know, many people were not for a lot of different reasons. Uh, you know, when the, when the, the uh, Panther Party was formed and they were, you know, made it national and they made uh, Kwame Touré and Imam Jamil, then Stokely Carmichael yeah, um, and H. Rap Brown, um, honorary, uh, uh, you know, yeah. ministers yeah. within the Black Panther Party. They were ministers for a minute and then, you know, contradictions arose and then they were expelled. And not only were they expelled, but I mean, there's an interesting thing. One of the last times I had an opportunity to talk to, you know, Kwame Touré, you know, he was talking about, you know, he had to go to Africa because so many people were after him. Yeah, but it I, was I, not just in terms of the Panthers, it was the government, it yeah. was the Panthers, yeah. it was there was so many things. There were so many issues or whatever, you know, his thing was listen, you know, I got to get out of here for a while so I can, mm. you know, gather my thoughts and maybe survive for a little while. Mm. The, uh, you know? the, there's, there's those a... things, you know, are not... I don't know if today one of the reasons why Imam Jamil is in prison. Uh, you know, didn't... Imam Jamil was convicted of a crime he did not commit. in Georgia. All right. And he's However, in, he's in he jail in Arizona. In, in federal prison. In Arizona. <laughs> mm hmm And uh, you know, he might have even been in one of the maxi, you know, there's several maxi maxi joints or whatever, because they were so fearful of him. Well, that's the one thing. Of the things that we've seen historically is that very often those people who had been affiliated with the Black Panther Party are people who stay in prison. For years and years and years and years, long even after mm. their terms actually expire. But here's the and thing. In prison. But here's the thing. That's my point. One of my biggest beefs today is that I just don't understand it. Do I don't care. Any of these old heads, these people that are now judges or university professors, whatever they are, that are members of SNCC, how come your leader is still in jail? How come you yeah. can't get, how come you can't, you should be sending enough in the system that you can get your, your, your innocent leader out of federal prison. How come you can't do that? that I'm gonna, yeah. it's, it's, it's a rhetorical question. Let me leave that alone. Okay. Well, you know, yeah, you, there, there's, 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 uh, there's so many, there's so many things, man. There's so much to, to deal with. This is the, you know, but we only can chip away at one, one thing at a time. That, that's why I like, I, I don't think everybody should be hurting on to one thing. Everybody just do your little thing and you see what happens. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Hey, brother, you yeah. know, there's, there's just a lot of work to do. Man. You know, it's just good that, you know, you have determined that you want to have these conversations, you know, you want to uh, save some of this stuff for posterity because it's important. Mm. You know, it's really important. Uh, you know, tomorrow, myself, and, uh, two other brothers, well, really three brothers are going to be talking about uh, jazz and self-determination. You know, oh. We're going to be talking about, we got a panel tomorrow. Um, I've got a panel coming up for the National Association of Black School Educators, where I'm going to be talking about the independent black schools movement mm -hmm. uh, on Thursday, the 25th. Mm. You know, so there's, there's work out here. There's work to be done. There are mm. things that are happening and, uh, you know, we have to continue doing what we can do while we can do it. Okay. Monsieur, it's always a pre pleasure, a, a huge, a huge pleasure and, ne and necessity, my brother. A necessity. It's necessary that I talk to you every once in a while. Hey, brother. You know, <laughs> and even when you get back to South Africa, you know, with this, 
new virtual world, mm. whether it's Zoom or whatever, you know, we're going to be able to connect on, uh, you know, in ways that we probably were not able to connect prior to this pandemic. You know. Okay. All right, man. Be well. Hug everybody for me. Stay safe. Indeed. You too, Will. All right.